as with King David, a number of problems arise with Solomon's reign. For example, his very expansion of territory, which we saw in the last lecture, was itself built on exploitation. And he seems to try for to have absolute power. His creation of 12 tax, tax districts centralized power, but it sort of replaced the tribal system. It did not reflect the natural boundaries of the tribes, and that caused a lot of resentment. He used forced labor, both conquered people and his own people. This was one of the warnings that the prophet Samuel gave in 1 Samuel, that this is the kind of thing that a king would do. And he meets with failure because of turning to foreign gods. He has great wealth, but a cash flow problem, and ends up giving 20 cities in Galilee to Hiram the king of Tyre. He is powerful from the Euphrates to the Philistines to the border of Egypt, but he has adversary, adversaries near home, Hadad of Edom, Rezin of Damascus, and Jeroboam of Ephraim. He is said to be wise, and yet he exploited the people so much that the bulk broke away after his death. So, a certain amount of ambiguity to his reign. We noted that in Deuteronomy 17, there are rules for kings about not multiplying horses, not multiplying wives, not multiplying silver or gold. You may indeed set over you a king whom the Lord your God will choose. Verse 16, he must not acquire many horses for himself or return the people to, it, to Egypt in order to acquire more horses. And he must not acquire many wives or else his heart will turn away. Also, sil silver and gold he must not acquire in great quantity for himself. And yet we see in chapter 10 that he accumulated chariots and horses. Remember that horses were not used to be ridden on, but were used to pull chariots. And it says in verse 28, Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Quay. Quay is, is in what is now southern Turkey. He also multiplies wives. King Solomon loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from the nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. And he is said to have had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. Also in Deuteronomy, it says, do not multiply silver or gold, and yet a whole account in chapter 10 is given of the amount of gold that Solomon received yearly and how many um, goods he received and how many gold implements he had made for him. Now, it is important to realize that the wives and the concubines are not there because of sensuality, but to ensure political and economic ties. So Solomon overall is judged to be sort of excessively broad-minded. He's going after uh, wives of many other countries and allowing worship of their gods in Israel. His whole reign tended to be what we call syncretistic, sort of combining um, 
features of Israelite religion and paganism. Even the sea in the courtyard of the temple is supported by 12 bulls, which in that area of the world symbolize fertility and mythological motifs. And even his wisdom has been tied to Egyptian influence, since we know that uh, Egyptian uh, Egyptian wisdom was, was very, very famous in the ancient world. And there are consequences to this. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your mind, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime, I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Now the Chronicles account, as with David, gives a much more positive view of Solomon's reign. So... All of the squabbling at the time of his accession to the throne is not given. So Chronicles tends to omit or reframe anything that is not ideal. For example, in 2 Chronicles 8, Hiram gives cities to Solomon rather than the other way around. There is nothing about Hadad or Rezon or Jeroboam's role in forced labor. And greater prominence is given to worship or cultic activities and various supernatural events during his lifetime. 